Please open your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians in the third chapter. 2 Corinthians in the third chapter. Uh, Ten years after accepting Jesus Christ, that would be the year of 1990, I had an incredible um, life-changing encounter with the Holy Spirit. This experience was more of an awakening than it really was a physical manifestation, although I guess you could call me laying prostrate on the ground for three hours in tears, a physical experience. But more than that experience, as wonderful as the manifestation was, something on that day happened to me. It was mainly a hunger and a desire that my lifelong goal was to teach others about the Holy Spirit. I can't take credit for this hunger. In fact, on that glorious day, when I really met him, listen to me now, I made this promise to him. I said, Holy Spirit, I devote my entire life to learning about you. I will teach the truth. I will teach others the truth about you. I give you my solemn vow, precious Holy Spirit. From that day to this day, it's difficult not to tie him in in every situation that I have had in my life. Over the last 25 years, he has taught me the secrets of living an anointed life, living a consecrated life. Just like Oliver said in the tithe message, for 25 years, ladies and gentlemen, there has not been a single day that has passed without asking the Holy Spirit to consecrate me. Not a single day in 25 years. Because there is something glorious about living a consecrated life. He has shown me, ladies and gentlemen, what a holy, consecrated, and anointed life should look like. He has also shown me what spiritual garbage collectors look like too. He has shown me what spiritual garbage collectors look like too. Who use his name to market his manifestations. Over the years, ladies and gentlemen, he has revealed to me, pay attention now, the ultimate sole purpose behind this great, incredible revelation of consecration, hear me, that very few enter into. Very few of those believers that have given their lives to Jesus Christ have entered into the consecrated holy life. And today... God chose you to be here so that I can educate you and teach you how to live a consecrated life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we do not move a single muscle when we are asking the Holy Spirit to teach us anything without asking for his instruction. For it is not by might, it is not by might, 
It is not by power, but by his Holy Spirit. So if you, in respect to our, the Spirit of God, put your hands to heaven and say, Holy Spirit. For the next 30 minutes, I yield my heart to you. Teach me the secrets of living a consecrated and holy life in the name of Jesus. Perfect. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse number 18. Let's read this together on the count of three out loud. Are you ready? One, two, three. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, 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 you must read this again now. We must read this again, right? Faith comes by hearing. Faith does not come by hearing me. Okay, read it again. One, two, and three. But we all... Uh-huh. Okay, so the ultimate purpose, the ultimate purpose, listen to me now, the ultimate purpose in being consecrated and being holy, listen to me, is to be, come, to become, to become like him. Hello. Hello. Let me say it a different way. The ultimate purpose in being holy is to behold what we are to become. Who do we behold? Him. So our ultimate goal in living a holy life is to behold what we are to become. It is only the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, it's not me, it is only the Holy Spirit, it says here, that by the Spirit of the Lord that you will understand and be changed into the safe self-image from glory to glory. As we, as we behold him, come on, listen to me, as we behold him, it is mirrored in our hearts. As we behold him, his image is mirrored in our hearts. Thus, we become consecrated. Thus, we become holy. In other words, in other words, we are not mainly seeking goosebumps. As wonderful as those goosebumps on goosebumps on goosebumps can be. We are not seeking religious experiences. We are not seeking to be holy so that we can impress everybody how holy we are. Right? We are seeking to be holy to become more like him. We are not seeking religious experiences like bleeding statues and angels singing in our ears. Somebody once said to me, I went someplace and I heard the angels singing in my ears as though that was supposed to make me think they were holy. Anybody done that before you? Before? Amen. <laughs> Holiness consecration oh is so incredible and that's why God sent you here today can I hear another another amen we behold him we behold him because we want to become like him are you 
Are you awake? Yes. Well, have a good afternoon, and we'll see you later. Amen? <laughs> you want more? But wait, there's more. Look at Psalms 19. Come on. So we are seeking not to be holy, not to be perfect. We are not seeking to be good. We are not seeking to be righteous. We are seeking him. Him, him, amen? And as we, listen to me, as we behold his glory, we are changed. Hear me. As we behold his glory, we are changed into the same self-image. Is that simple or what? Huh? Is that simple or what? Listen to me. There is, are you listening to me? There is a tremendous power for us in God, but not without holiness. Now, I know what everybody is thinking. The only thing holy about me is my underwear. <laughs> I know you're thinking that. No, the only thing holy about me are my socks. How about that? Would you like that better? There is no way, no way, no way that a single human being, listen to me, my voice, can ever make yourself holy. You can try, but you never will make yourself holy. Now listen to me and listen to me good and put on those listening ears. As you mature in the Lord Jesus Christ, a time will come if it has not come already. Are you awake? Yes. When Christ will begin to reveal himself to you in a way that he has never revealed himself to you before. We call this a revelation. Say revelation. revelation. It's a revelation. I had a revelation of Jesus Christ today. Anybody had a revelation of Christ Jesus? And as you mature with the Lord Jesus Christ, you begin to receive revelations or encounters which sometimes... Please hear me. These revelations and these encounters can sometimes be very alarming. Why? Don't miss a word I say. Are you paying attention? Because the Holy Spirit exposes your foes in you before you can conquer them. I don't think you. There should have been more amens here. You see, when we seek holiness, most people are waiting for the goosebumps situation. Being slain and tears and all that stuff. But as you mature in the Lord, something glorious begins to happen. He begins to expose the impurities in your heart. It's a dreadful experience for some because you've come your entire life to count so much on all that you are, all that you've become to make myself holy. And the Holy Spirit comes in great revelation. And what he does is he finds the error inside of us that are ruling us without us even knowing it. Are you awake? So to live a consecrated and holy life, we need someone who will listen to to point out our errors in a loving way. 
But if you're a person who cannot accept criticism very well, chances are you can't accept it from him either. Did you hear what I said? I don't think you did. If you are a person that cannot accept counsel or accept criticism or accept correction from people, chances are you will not accept it from him. Thus, inside of you will be errors that will rule you without you even being aware. Jesus said he has come to convict the world of sin. Psalms 19, verse number 12. Read it, read it, read it, read it with me. Verse 12, 1, 2, 3. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me, thou, from my secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgressions. Verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my and my Hallelujah. Look at me. Any actions, thoughts, or behaviors, are you paying attention? You better be. Any actions, thoughts, or behaviors that manipulated by vanity and pride in your life, if you know the Holy Spirit will be revealed to you. Did you hear what I said? Any pride, any vanity, any selfishness that your flesh will manipulate itself to convince yourself how holy you are that are hidden and secret deep down in the recesses of your heart when which you refuse to allow mommy and daddy to correct you or your pastor to correct you, he will correct you in order so that you may take into recognition the fact that you are your own worst enemy. Amen? This is what he does. And this is what he does so well. Are you paying attention? How many of you people in this room seriously say, I want to live a holy life? Okay. Oh, listen to me on something. It's amazing. It's amazing how we sometimes think so highly of ourselves, isn't it? Huh? It's amazing how how highly we think of ourselves sometimes, and yet we know so little. Amen? Amen. Isn't it amazing? Who are you? My name is Michael DeRoche. I have a master's degree, and I am good-looking. <laughs> we love it. We love to think of ourselves more highly than we are, don't we? But to live a consecrated life, a life which is holy, look, 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 there is only one thing holy about you, and it's him. Because your works are as dirty rags to him. So then, what is holiness? What is consecration? Now, your first thought, if I said to you, are you holy? Your first reaction would be, I try to be. I, I try to be. I go to church on Sundays, you know. I, I, I vacuum the floor 
at the church. I pray three times, sometimes four times a day. Yep, mm -hmm. I do. Everybody loves me. See, the first thought is here, right? It's here. But something most glorious is revealed in the Word. Now, I'm going to give you the chapter, 1 Thess, chapter 4. Now, go to 1 Thess, chapter 4. I'm not going to give you the verse yet. I don't want you to be ahead of me now. Amen? 1 Thess, chapter 4. Amen? Are you there? Are you learning something? Am I entertaining you this morning? Good. I live this church. This is things that he has shown me. In my pompousness and my pride, he has shown me. You really know nothing, Michael. Oh, it's glorious to have that knowledge of yourself. So let me tell you this. Are you ready? Holiness is not, wow, walking in perfection. Say holiness, holiness. is not in perfection. Amen? Are you ready? Would it be to tell you what it is? Now you're not going to like this. Holiness is walking a repentive life. You see, some people live their spirituality here. We call this the exodus. And from the exodus of the mind to the promised land, which is here, some people can't get from here to here. So the distance between here and here, the exodus in the promised land, according to the Israelites, was only 40 miles. Look how far it is from here to here. But most people, Christians, cannot live in this realm. They live holiness in this realm. Holiness, pay attention, holiness is not walking in perfection that we want to show everybody how perfect we are. <laughs> Holiness is walking a repentant life, a life of total surrender. That's holiness. Can I hear another amen? amen? Let me just tell you something. Holiness cannot be obtained by vacuuming the floor at the church. Holiness is not obtained by works, lest any man could. Holiness is a repentive life. Do you know something? Most people have no problem in the world walking 10,000 miles for somebody whom they love. But very few Christians could walk three feet for the same person and say how sorry they am for hurting them. Because somewhere deep down inside of them is an unconsecrated thought life that you have. And the Holy Spirit wants a piece of that. Amen. Can I hear another amen? amen? Can I hear another, 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 another amen? amen. Holiness is not a result of walking by the law. You know what I mean by that? By being good. <laughs> Holiness, now this, you have to pay very close attention. Just poke your neighbor and say, now you got to listen to this. Holiness is a direct result of a relationship. Say relationship. A relationship with God. Holy Spirit. After a while, you become so enlightened when he points out the darkness in you. You are so grateful. 
how he has pointed out the error of your ways, which at one time you would never want to admit. Oh, it's glorious. And then when you're able to receive from him the Holy Spirit, the conviction and correction of the darkness which is in you, you then become more receptive to receive it from other people who know him too. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you want to live a holy life? Then you better listen up. You better listen up here this morning. Let's take a look at first this. Chapter 4, verse 7. Come on, come on, come on. You there? Read it on the count of three. One, two, three, four. God has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto he therefore that despiseth. Despiseth. Despise this not man, but God. Listen to this. Who has also given unto him his Holy Spirit. You better catch this one. I'm going to stand back here and read it with you. Come on. He, therefore, that despise this. Despise this not man. Let me tell you what he's saying here. He that despises the correction and conviction of the Holy Spirit through man through maybe your daddy, your pastor, your friend, he doesn't despise that man. When, when, when a pastor, when a father, somebody comes to you and tries to correct you in your ways, you're not despising that man. Who are you despising? God. Who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. When your pastor comes to you, your mother or father comes to you who know the Holy Spirit, and they say, mm, 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 mm. No, I think you better zig instead of zag. And you say to yourself, I don't really think he knows what he's talking about. You better be very, very sure that you're not rejecting Pastor Mike. You're rejecting God. What is my ultimate goal for my church? To live holy. Not perfect, but holy. Why? Let's take a look at verse 7 again there, brother. Sister, I mean. For God has not called us unto uncleanliness, but the Holy Spirit's ministry, purpose, function. Did you ever, anybody in here ever been a bridesmaid before? Who's been a bridesmaid? What is the bridesmaid responsibility? I, I've seen bridesmaids, they go up to the bride and they'll go like this, right? Nicely fix, and they'll take the train and they'll make, right? They're about to present the bride to who? Yeah, 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 yeah. The bride's made job is to present the bride to the groom. Are you getting the picture? And so if the bridesmaid says, Anita, that hair on top is out of place, and the bride says, get away from me. You're always picking on me and picking out the bed. So why don't you, see? The job of the Holy Spirit is the bridesmaid to the bride to prepare the bride for the wedding day to present you holy before God. Now do you understand? The Holy Spirit is our maid of honor. And she has to reveal the ugliness about you so that you can be presented before your bride without spot, pimples, 
or wrinkles. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let me just tell you something. On that glorious day when Jesus calls me home, there is but one thing and one thing only that I want him to say to me. He has given me a mission and a mandate to reveal the greatness of the spirit of the living God. Look at Colossians 1.22 if you can. Colossians 1.22. Are you still awake? Yes. I told you 40 minutes. We've got 30 to go. Amen? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Are you ready? Come on, come on. Look at this glorious scripture. Now you know what it means. Amen? What did I say? 22? In the body of his flesh through death to present you and, and in his sight. Well, now wait just one minute there, big shot pastor bike. I've seen you. I've seen you less than holy. Who are you to talk, you Mr. Big Hypocrite, you holy? Uh, holiness is so different than what you thought holiness to be. Holiness is a repentant life. Amen. If you can get that peace of revelation in your heart. You don't ever have to ever consider yourself ever again. Ever. To be unclean. Say, I am clean by the blood But, Pastor, I can't accept this. You know, two days ago, I smoked marijuana. <gasps> okay, so what? I haven't talked to my mother in five years. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's got nothing to do. Look unto his glory. I look unto him, the author, the finisher of my faith. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Can I hear a hallelujah there? Now listen up. In the beginning of your Christian walk, you embrace life by your own strength. In the beginning of your Christian walk, you trust in your skills and you trust in your success by what you have attained because you're a prayer warrior. We've turned to God, but we've turned to God in mainly the times of grief. Yes, we have. In fact, you came to God in your time of grief. I have never met, not that there isn't, I have never met one person that says, I was on the mountaintop of life, the most successful in the world. I had everything. And then I gave Christ my life. No. I was down. I was a drug addict. I was a sinner. 
I was wretched. I was lost. I was empty. And it was only at the pit that I'd find him. But as the Lord, Jesus, begins to mature you. What's that word? Yeah. Some people are very immature. But as the Lord begins to mature you, we, what we once considered to be our strength, listen to me clearly here, what we once considered to be our strengths, we actually begin to discover that those are our weaknesses. Wow. As you grow in the Lord, your pride, your self-confidence, because now you begin to quote scriptures, huh? Yeah, you're so sharp. For thus saith the Lord God, greater is he in me than he that's in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I know those scriptures, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all that clamor, all that noise, you're drowning out the whisper of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't need you to memorize a single scripture. I used to memorize scriptures until I, I learned, you know what, it's not about memorizing scripture. It's about knowing him. Amen. You know? And then all of a sudden, those, those scriptures become like they just bubble out of me, you know? And then in time, as we mature in the Lord, we, we, we all discover how truly ineffective we can be. Huh? And then we discover something. How much we need him. And as you mature in the Lord, and as you great, you attain status and, and responsibility, you, you even, as much as pastor a church, he begins to show you even more, I don't really need you. Oh, what a revelation. Now, I'm going to give you a nugget of truth. I'm going to ask you to write it down. As we mature in the Lord, listen to me now. As we mature in the Lord, we actually grow weaker. As we mature in the Lord, we actually grow less confident in our abilities. As we mature in the Lord, the outer shell of self-righteousness begins to crumble. I'm going to read it to you again. As we mature in the Lord we actually grow weaker. As we mature in the Lord, we actually grow less confident of our abilities. As the outer shell of self-righteousness crumbles, and then Jesus himself becomes God's answer to every man Amen. who thus cries out, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. And as you mature in the Lord and you grow less dependent upon yourself, mold you and shape you into a man and woman of holiness. Amen. Now listen to me. 
You must grasp this truth this morning, not with one hand, but with both. And never let this truth escape you. Never. Say, Jesus is my source. Holy Spirit is the power. Change me, shape me, and mold me. Listen with your heart now, church. You want to live a consecrated and holy life? Listen to me. God does not need what you can do. He wants your need and poverty apart from him. Hear me. Our goal is not to become powerful, but to become holy. Why do you think we see so many incredible miracles? I want you to know something. In my prayer time yesterday, the Lord said to tell you something. He said, this church here is a holy church. I said, really, Lord? He says, you tell them that. You are holy to him. Do you want to see the power of God in your life? Then, seek to know the Holy Spirit. Pastor, I don't, sometimes I don't don't know how to do that. If you wanted to seek to know me, what would you do? Say, the bigger I grow in God, the smaller I become. Did you catch that? I don't think you really did. I think your flesh is fighting you a little bit here. Say it again. Say, the bigger I grow in God, the smaller I become. Because God gives grace and holiness to the humble. Can I hear an amen? Look at John chapter 30. John chapter 3, verse 30, and we will close. Amen? I'm going to try to keep it to 40 minutes. I think we're at 36 and a half right now. Amen? Amen? By the way, I want to see you all at that picnic today. Amen? You better be here at that picnic. Are you ready? We're going to close it up. Amen? And then I'm going to pray for you afterward. Even though there's a picnic, I've got to lay my hands on some of you guys that... That, that the only thing holy about you right now are your socks, amen? We're, gonna, we're just going to pray that you know that you're confident, amen? Confident in what God told me to tell you, amen? Look at John chapter 3 and verse 30. What did he say? <laughs> the greatest prophet known to man according to Jesus, who was considered by him to be the greatest, spoke seven words of glory. And these seven words in John chapter 3, verse 30, contain Holy Spirit, the entire mystery of God's dealing with mankind to consecrate them. He, the Christ, must increase. Me, the man, must decrease. Seven words of glory. Our decrease and his increase. It is not me, Lord. It is you, Lord Jesus. In other words, everything God has done, everything God is doing, he does it for one purpose. To consecrate you. 
And so here you stand, you the bride of Christ, on the wedding day. And you, the bride, consider yourself to be so holy before God. And you wear the white gown and carry the beautiful flowers. And then the Holy Spirit comes along and says, mm -mm. I want to present you. It's his job. And as the wedding march procession begins, the bride of Christ appears before God as Jesus, the groom, waits for you. And as the bride is marching down the aisle, the bridegroom still attending to the bride. And until he takes you home, he will always and forever guard your heart and make sure that any darkness that you have defended inside of your soul be revealed before the Almighty. So the consecrated and holy life is a powerful life because we don't seek power. We seek him. Close your Bibles. Stand to your feet. Come on.